Yes. Yeah. Can we talk about yourself for a minute? Sure, yeah, let's talk about the cell. Um, this one here is, this isn't the original vision cell that I built. This is uh, one that I have built since. I built the original one on a chop saw, a shop smith with a back gear on it and a drill press. And so there wasn't the tolerances that I was comfortable with and I might have, I wanted these tubes to be perfectly concentric. And so I got it in touch with a laser, a guy with a laser, uh, laser cutter in a metal shop and he cut out for me these plastic guides and these contact plates and uh, helped me build an alignment jig and we tig these pieces together and there is a, a, a tolerance of about two thousandths of an inch on this. So when this is actually tested with, I'm going to test it with conventional Faraday, the way the cell is set up, it's just seven tubes on one plate and one contact, seven tubes that slide inside on another plate on one contact. It's simply a big uh, single, uh, single pole cell, or two pole cell. Uh, it's, this, because of the way it's built, is very robust. It's 316 grade stainless, uh, can probably handle two or 300 amps. Uh, I want to get the Faraday numbers on it, see how it comes out, see what it'll do. Then I'm going to start pulsing at different frequencies, see if I can find a frequency that, that takes advantage of the, the capacitive. How many amps do you have to I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised to see, see this thing handle 200 amps, but, 200. I, but once again, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far in testing. Um, when I get there, I'll be posting information as I go. I'll be posting it on the Energy Builder site. <coughs> I don't have my own site because I, I don't have time to deal with it. But I believe that there is a lot of hope for this. What has happened, I'll be honest with you, is last year I was fairly close to where I was with this. Now, <coughs> last year I was hoping that somebody else would crack the Myers code by now and I'd just copy their work. You know, <laughs> people are looking stuff I've done. I haven't had an original thought in years. I just take the work of other people and put it together. So, um, Nobody has since, since last year come up with anything on Mars, so I will be redirecting my attention to making that cell work. In the, in the meantime, I was looking for the best way to make a standard series cell work. This is a standard 11 plate series cell, 1 8 inch spacing. And on the bottom, I, I drilled a hole to cap the bottom to prevent the shorting across the bottom, yet I put a plate across the bottom and there's holes in here strategically placed so that there can't be much shorting. There are better ways to do it. The wet system epoxy as a sealer is another option and all that. Um, I did come up with an adhesive. I should have brought some in. It's an industrial adhesive that um, is designed to bond stainless steel to acrylic or polycarbonate and it will survive a caustic environment. So I use a table saw with a micro, uh, dial indicators on the fence and cut my grooves and set my plates in here. Uh, that's, that's a rather detailed process. <coughs> it's fairly accurate and the plate tolerances on it are within two or three thousandths. So um, I have found that putting that capping the bottom produces at least 20% increase in efficiency. So if you can eliminate that shorting on the bottom, the top of the cell is not exposed. This is a flooded cell. You know, it, it's, a, it's a swimmer, it's not a dry cell. Uh, so you have that reservoir circumstance to deal with. But by capping the bottom, you eliminate that shorting and increase your efficiency. That's, where, that's what that is. Any other questions? Go ahead. I've heard that the HAFC people are using uh, a different electrolyte. They said it was like Gatorade and it wasn't supposed to be so hard if you spill it on aluminum like the, the potassium will yep. eat through aluminum. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I have experimented with p potassium carbonate and with uh, sodium carbonate. I have not used sodium hydroxide. I like to stay away from sodium because of the corrosive component of them. You definitely want to stay away from sodium chloride or anything with chlorine in it because the chlorine that is off gas. I have not heard of what the HFC people were doing with that. What about lemon juice? Lemon juice is acid. That, that's going a different direction. Uh, the, the caustic is alkali. It's a high pH. The acid will do the same thing. But once again, I haven't done any quantifying of the output with the cells. 
I believe that the electrolyte that you use has a great deal to do with how, how much it attacks the plates uh, using the better grade 316L and having it having electro conditioned and, and all that is the best way to keep your cells clean. Um, the potassium hydroxide that I've been using has been working quite well and that's pretty much where, what I'm going with. I have done some experiments with the potassium carbonate and found that it takes like six times more by weight to, to get the same uh, conductivity through the cells. Oh, that's it. All right, I'll go, I'll go ahead. Well, I got a question. On, on the table outside, you have some uh, coils. And I don't know if you'd like to talk about that. Yeah, the coil that I have outside is uh, a four inch toroidal core. It's a uh, micro metals number T40026. It's a core. Uh, I'm using those as inductors to pair with this capacitor. Okay, the Meyer. Uh, the way that Stan Meyer had it worked out, he had capacitors and inductors to create a tank circuit. Uh, I'm once again, I haven't gotten that far with my research. I have all the equipment to do it, uh, but I just keep uh, not able to catch that elusive time monster. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm getting there slowly. Then there's a reason for the moniker Turtle. I'm not quite slow about what I do. But the inductors, yes, I plan on using those inductors as inductors to pair with the capacitor to create the tank circuit. And also, I will additional, combine additional secondary wraps on it and create the VIC, the voltage intensifier circuit, out of that inductor core. I built an inductor, I built a toroid core winder. I didn't bring it because it's not done. And, but it, it does, it has worked in some preliminary tests. So, it's a bifiler coil? Uh, I'm not, I don't have the bifiler capacity on the winder. Uh, nor have I wound any of those cores by filer. I probably will as time goes on. Right. Thank you. Once again, um, the, the, the interest in the electrolyte has come primarily to provide a good working base for the brute force HHO. Uh, I, I'm attacking this from all different sides. I have a number of different engines that I can eventually run on HHO, and so the primary purpose now, or previously, has been to try to generate as much as, as possible, and in the meantime also work on the Myers cell. I believe the Myers cell will eventually be made to work. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm still plugging away at it, and remember who won the race. <laughs> Thank you.